Welcome to I Love News, tips and advice. In this episode of our series, How to Ask a Girl Out and Keep Her Happy, I'm going to teach all you nice guys out there how to hunt, catch, and keep a good woman. We all know it's easy to get an easy, bitchy, dirty skank ho who'll cheat on you with your brother, best friend, boss, and pool boy, and then on your son's 18th birthday you find out he's not yours. Because chicks like that are easy to get. And they will always kill your self-esteem, destroy your moral intelligence, and possibly ruin your life, if you let them. But you don't want those concubines. You want a cool girl, a good woman, a nice lady, to have as your princess and maybe your queen one day. You want the kind of female you can bring home to mom and dad and feel good with right? Well, maybe you're, you have no game, or maybe you have no knowledge, or maybe you're just a shy, sweet guy, and when you see a girl you like, you get all choked up and speechless. Well, fret no more, laddies. Christy Love is here to help you successfully hunt, catch, and keep a good woman, so pay attention. See, the act of hunting, catching, and keeping a good woman is much like playing a video game. Only you're inside this game, and instead of scary weapons of mass destruction, you need hot tools of mass production. When it comes to asking a girl out and then keeping her happy when you finally get personal one-on-one -on -one time with her, it works like this. There are three levels in the video game of love. Level one is the romantic. Level two is the comedian, and level three is the hero. Each level of the video game is basically just you mastering the hat of another vital character within yourself. I break it down like this. In level one, you put on the hat of the romantic, or the charming romantic. This is the educated, sophisticated, worldly, experienced, knowing man within you, who flatters the woman of your dreams with charming, heartwarming gifts and memorable, memorably sentimental romance. Those gifts of romance will make your girl feel both wanted by you and curious about you. Because remember, you got to always make her feel wanted if you want her to always want you. See, you got to give the want to get the want, because wanting is a two-way street, baby. See how that works? And if you do it creatively enough with charm and a wink, <laughs> she'll automatically be intrigued by you and want to know you more. Or want to know more about you. Because when you're the sexy romantic guy, women admire your sophistication, confidence, and charm. They enjoy how wanted your sexy, creatively charming attention makes them feel. So being the sexy, charming romantic is what will open the door of love for you. When you win this first level of the courtship game, it's basically like you've won three stars on the bronze level, and now you're the bronze knight, which means you've victoriously entered the C-list 90% grade. Now you're in the big leagues on the third level of the highest class, gaining the charming romantic power of the sexy wanting adult personality. You just got yourself the bronze trophy, winning third place in your competition with yourself. Congrats! Now on to level two. In level two, you put on the hat of the funny comedian. This is the talented, creative, original, social, charismatic man within you who pleasures the woman of your dreams with funny, relaxed jokes and sincerely happy laughs. Those jokes of laughter will make your girl feel both delighted by you and excited about you. Because remember, you gotta always make her feel pleasured if you want her to pleasure you. So, <laughs> you gotta give the pleasure to get the pleasure, because pleasure is a two-way street, baby. See how that works? And if you do it intelligently enough, with charisma and sense, she'll automatically be attracted to you and always want to be around you. Because when you're the fun comedian, women admire your playfulness, intelligence, and charisma. They enjoy how pleasured your fun, intelligently funny humor makes them feel. So, being the fun, funny comedian is what will get you through that open door of love smoothly. When you win this second level of the courtship game, it's basically like you've won four stars on the silver level, and now you're the silver prince, which means you've victoriously entered the B-list 95% grade. Now you're in the big leagues on the fourth level of the highest class, gaining the funny comedian power of the fun, pleasuring child personality. You just got yourself the silver trophy, winning second place in your competition with yourself. Congrats! Now on to level three, the third and final level of the game. In level three, you put on the hat of the strong hero. This is the powerful, masculine, protective, instinctive, unbreakable man within you, who protects the women of your dreams with aggressively aware security and strong, enduring love. That security of love will make your girl feel both loved by you and safe with you. Because remember, you gotta always make her feel protected if you want her to always protect her relationship with you with her loyalty. 
because protection is a two-way street, baby. You gotta give the protection to get the protection. See how that works? And if you do it constantly enough with strength and sincerity, she'll automatically be in admiration of you and want to stay with you. Because when you are the sincere hero, women admire your character, love, and strength. They enjoy how protected your sincere and admirably strong love makes them feel. So being the sincere, strong hero is what will keep you in that open door of love forever. When you win this third level of the courtship game, it's basically like you've won five stars on the golden level. And now you're the golden king of the castle, which means you've victoriously entered the A-list 100% grade. Now you're in the big leagues on the fifth and final level of the highest class, gaining the strong hero power of the sincere, protective parent personality. You've become Big Daddy now. You've just gotten yourself the golden trophy winning first place in your competition with yourself. Congrats! Now that you have a general understanding of what each level of the courtship game of love is, and a summary of each character's hat that you will learn to master and wear well over time, get your pen and paper out now to take notes as we put this knowledge to use and actually go over the action steps you will take to mo make magic happen in your love life. Here is the ideal way of how to ask a girl out that you you know, think it could potentially be your dream girl. This is just an example, by the way. You can do this in a million different ways. This is just one way that usually works. Ready? Let's begin. Level one. Put on the hat of the sexy, charming romantic who flatters the girl you want with creative gifts and gestures. Example. Maybe the girl you want will be in a controlled environment like school, work, or church. Be careful at work, though. Try not to hit on girls you work with unless, or at least until after your work hours when you're off work property so you can't get sued for sexual harassment. Or maybe your girl will be in an uncontrolled environment, which is better. Like while you're running errands at the store, or you're partying at a friend's wedding, or you're just in your neighborhood, maybe walking your dog. So what you do is... You can either make them yourself right now, or you can order them online this week, but you make some maybe like free business cards, like from vistaprint.com or something. Just pay for shipping. And you maybe make like romantic red and white cards with a picture of a red rose on them, with a maybe like a poem on each one, like roses are red, violets are blue, there's nobody in this world more beautiful than you. And maybe at the bottom of the card it reads something like, this beautiful royalty club car membership card belongs to the most beautiful woman in the world, or something cute like that. And what you do is, when you see your girl, wherever she is, you go up to her with the card discreetly cupped in your hand, like this, discreetly cupped. And <laughs> when you have the cup, when you have it in your hand, cupped in your hand, out of sight, you bend over by her, like you're picking something up. Then you hand the card to your dream girl, but be sure to block what's on the card so she has to take it from you in order to identify it. And you say to her, really cool, relaxed, and nonchalant like, excuse me, princess, but I think you dropped this with a very cute, mischievous smile. And when she takes it to look at it, she'll either say, oh no, that's not mine, or she'll be like, oh thanks, or she'll be confused and just reread it, trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> that will happen sometimes. Either way, all you do is shrug, and you say to her, yeah, it says it belongs to the most beautiful girl in the world, and I just figured, well, obviously that's you. <laughs> and I don't care who she is or what mood she's in, unless somebody just died in her life, if she's a decent human being, she will immediately smile big, and a grin will cover her whole face from ear to ear, like a kid on Christmas. As soon as you make her smile at your charming gift, that means the romantic in you just opened the door and won level one in the courtship game of love. Bronze trophy to you. You're a third place champion. Congratulations, Mr. Knight. But now, this is when you immediately transition into level two. Two. And you put on the hat of the fun, funny comedian who pleasures the girl you want with intelligent jokes and laughter. Now, this level could be a little tricky because different people have different senses of humor, so not everything you say that's funny to one girl will be funny to another. But I can say, whatever you do, make sure you avoid controversial or potentially divisive subject matter like politics or religion or anything else hyper emotional or belief related. I mean, unless she's, like, wearing a t-shirt that says, I love Jesus, or I hate Republicans, or astrology rocks, or fear the Illuminati, Big Brother is watching, you know, something that's obvious that tells you what she believes, 
don't go there, okay? You don't want to rub her the wrong way by insulting or offending her ideology or philosophies. And even if you share similar views, like maybe you both love Jesus, or maybe you both hate Republicans, or maybe you both feel both ways. Either way, you still don't want to scare her away by making her think you're such a fanatic about your beliefs that you'd rather sell her your ideology rather than to sell her your personality or your interest in her. So you don't want to get into beliefs and ideology until after you're sure she likes you. Maybe a few dates in, but definitely not before the first date if you can avoid it. Unless it's an election year and she's wearing a support my candidate button or something. In that case, be sure to let her know if you're voting for her candidate. And if you're not voting for her candidate, keep that secret to yourself. You should also avoid sex jokes or anything else that could translate as giggity giggity. Because unless she knows you or has made clear that she genuinely likes dirty humor, you don't want to come off as a pervy, rapey little creep like Cragmire, who just leaves her thinking you're just an immature, horny geek who's desperate to get laid and desperate to jump her bones. Because if she doesn't know you and you introduce yourself to her with sex jokes, subconsciously she's automatically going to put up all of her defense walls and assume that you're just trying to get in her pants. And then she'll put all kinds of locks on the door of her heart so that you can't get in far enough to actually get a real chance with her ever if she's a nice girl or a smart girl. So the best humor to use with a girl you don't really know is pop culture humor. It's safe and non-divisive, unless she's 12 years old and you're bashing Justin Bieber. It's familiar and relatable, unless she lives in a cave or a science lab. And it's fun and playful, unless she's really boring, rigid, and old. So you should stick with something funny and relatable in pop culture. Keep it positive and don't start off with something negative. Women are negative, men are positive, that's why women love men, we love your positivity. So be positive. And when you're introducing yourself to someone, you always want to show what a winner you are by building yourself up, not show what a loser you are by tearing everybody else around you down. So show her you're a winner and try to be funny without tearing anyone down. For example, and this is just an example, after you say, obviously that's you, and you get her to smile, you immediately say, you know, it's funny, I saw this episode of South Park where all the celebrities moved into town and all the locals freaked out because all the celebrities took over their city. So all they all just went nuts. And you know Cartman, he was all like, don't let them take my chichi poos. Just throwing a you know, char funny character impression if you have one. Then say, but after running into a celebrity like you, I don't know what they were complaining about because I'd love for you to take over my town anytime you want, sweetheart. Boom. <laughs> this will either make her giggle like a little schoolgirl, or smile and blush shyly, or she, you know, there's an off chance she might say she doesn't watch South Park. Either way, saying something funny and familiar to her with relatable humor will get a chuckling rise out of her and hit her funny bone, especially if you also continue to maintain the charming romantic, flattering her with your playful humor, maintaining that romantic theme throughout your entire little comedy bit, which will make her see the playful fun you are to be around. And as soon as you make her giggle at your funny joke, that means the comedian in you just walked through that open door. And one level two in the courtship game of love, silver trophy to you, you're a second place champion. Congratulations, Mr. Prince. But now, this is when you carefully transition into level three. And you put on the hat of the sincere, strong hero who protects the girl you want with aggressive security and enduring love. This is where you prove you're her protector, who will come to her rescue and let her be the damsel in distress so you can save her and take care of her whenever she's in need of your protection. Now, if she's one of those hardcore, women's lib, independent women types who just refuses to let you protect her and take the lead in the relationship, then unless you like that kind of thing, I suggest you just be her friend and let it go. Don't try to force time-tested natural intelligence onto new age artificial intelligence. I mean, it's one thing if she's got a tough outer shell, but she's still mushy and soft on the inside like a crab, and you just have to find the right button to push to chill her out. But it's another thing altogether if she's hard on the inside too. Like, if she's hardwired to repel any traditional values, or any old school courtship and chivalry, or any masculine leadership that you bring to the table, no matter how hard you try, then I hate to break it to you, but if, if, if at this point in her life, I would say she's not the right one for you. You know, you're wasting your time. And you need to move on to a more feminine, natural type of female. 
at least until she softens up for you a bit. And a few bad boyfriends will surely do that to her. Now, after you've made your joke and got a happy little rise out of your potential dream girl, you wrap it up and you seal the deal, okay? Don't kill the deal by overselling yourself or by overstaying your welcome. In the beginning, you always got to leave them wanting more. Later on, you can both be as intense, passionate, obsessed, and clingy with each other as you want, like Bella and Edward in Twilight. But until you get to that point, keep it quick, keep it light, and keep it moving, baby. Because you got a life, and you got big things to do. You don't say that, okay? Don't ever say that to her, because then you'll just sound like a self-absorbed douche. I'm just saying that you want her to think that way about you. But you want her to think that she's at the top of your list. You just don't want her to think she's the only thing on your list. There is a difference. So unless you can detour to help her with something, like if she needs help carrying something or picking something up or retrieving her order or putting something back or maybe even studying something or finding something or fixing something like her laptop's internet connection at Barnes & Noble or something, or maybe defending her uh, against something at a party, you know, uh, protecting her against somebody at a party. Unless you can find a way to help her, wrap up your meet and greet. Now, yes, I encourage you to try your best to find a way to help her before you leave her presence. That's 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 key to, you know, driving home the hero point. But if you can't find anything you can help her with or after you finish helping her with whatever she needs, wrap it up. So first, you should look at something that she appears to need help with and ask her, can I help you with that, darling? As you move in the direction of whatever it is she looks like she may need some help with. But try to only ask that question if you see an opening to help her. Okay, never ask a yes or no question that she can easily say no to because you want to get her in the habit of saying yes to you so you can train her mind into that habit by only asking her yes or no questions that she will likely say yes to. That is Sales 101. Just like the ABCs, always be closing the sale. So after you help her, you know, um, or look to see if, you know, you can help her with anything, you you basically wrap up your dating sales pitch with something charmingly heroic along the lines of, Well, I love having the pleasure of meeting you, beautiful, but I have to go save a bunch of orphans from a burning building now. You know, hero stuff. So if ever you need a, boy, a bodyguard to come rescue you or protect you from all your many admirers, you give me a call, and I'll be there for you anytime you want, no matter what. Then you say to her in like a strong, sexy, cool, confident, manly voice, would you like me to put my number in your phone? <laughs> you say that with a relaxed smile and you keep your eyes locked into hers. Do not drop your gaze for any reason. Any. Be as intense as you can be here. You let her be the first one to drop her gaze and she will submit to you. In fact, more than likely, she will give her you her phone for you to put her, your number in, but when you put your number in, you call yourself from her phone. I'm just keeping it real. If she wants to keep control over her phone and plug your number in for you, then you ask her to call your number to make sure you gave her the right number, because sometimes you forget your number, you know, because you don't normally give your number out. <laughs> And you don't call yourself, so you need her to call your number to make sure it's the right number. <laughs> as soon as your phone rings, you ask her to spell her name so you know it. And if you're confident things are going well, heck, you can even ask her for her Facebook, her email, her Instagram, whatever. Get all the information she's willing to give you so you can do some research on her before you go on your first date with her. But after you get all her information from her, after you've put you know, her in the habit of saying yes to you and letting you into her world now, you simply say to her something to the effect of, oh, by the way, what's the last movie you saw? Okay? And um, basically, listen to her answer. Then you ask her, how'd you like that movie? Or if she doesn't have one, just keep going to the next question, which is, do you like going to the movies? And if she says yes or shrugs, that's when you say, well, I asked because a friend of mine wants to see the upcoming comedy, Hangover 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever. Any funny comedy that's out in theaters. If you and a girlfriend want to come join us, I'll call you this weekend. My treat. You're both paid for. Cool? Generally speaking, she's going to say, sure. Because all she's really committing to is a phone call. Or she'll say, my friend isn't available this weekend, which is when you just say, we'll figure it out. 
but you start off with a group date so it makes her feel safer and more secure with you and it takes the pressure off of her you know where she doesn't feel like she's going to have to worry about your behavior with her or her dynamic with you or awkward silent moments between the two of you because making it a group date removes all sexual pressure and emotional anxiety from the date and that pressure and anxiety is usually the most common reason why most women say no to a date with a guy they don't really know that might I mean she you know women she might actually be physically attracted to you you know women might actually be physically attracted to you they just don't feel like dealing with the emotional stress of you that's how we are that's the way God made us an all expenses paid group date will nip that valid objection and worry right in the bud she will have no excuse to say no to you other than maybe her schedule conflicting which is an easy objection that's so easy to overcome just change the date also if you make it a buddy date she'll feel like it's going to be fun whether or not she connects with you romantically so she'll probably feel like she has nothing to lose by going with you and if you sound like you have a close friend well, she'll also trust you more and fear you less. Because most serial killers are incapable of forming healthy emotional bonds with other human beings. Yay for you. Also, <laughs> if you offer to pay for a friend, well, pff, that just makes her like you more. Because she'll think of you as a generous, kind, and manly provider. And that will also make her more possessive over you. And provoke her to want to claim you more. Because now you're bringing her friend under the umbrella of your generous masculine love and she's gonna want to bottle that for herself psychology 101 kid that's human nature baby but don't flirt with her friend she will either hate you for embarrassing and hurting her or she'll lose all respect for you when she realizes that you're just playing catty games with her to try to manipulate her like a woman she might even end up liking your buddy more than you because of it don't want that so as soon as you get her to give you her number and agree to let you call her about your upcoming double date, that means the hero in you just locked yourself inside that open door and won level three in the courtship game of love. Golden trophy to you. You're a first place champion. Congratulations, Mr. King. Now, if you can maintain the romantic, the comedian, and the hero, you will keep her happy on every date you take her on and forever and ever and ever. Amen. If you can be all three of these characters well, you couldn't pay her to leave you. But if you're not educated or sophisticated enough to successfully be the charming romantic yet, or you're not talented or creative enough to be to successfully be the romantic or the funny comedian yet, no matter what, whatever you do, plan B is to always be the hero. Because the hero lives within us all. So you have, you know, and that's what matters the most anyway. She cares most about the hero. So you have a hero inside of you, no matter what your life has been like, a hero always exists inside of you. Because the hero that lives inside of you is simply the ultimate height of your manhood. Being a hero doesn't require worldly sophistication like the romantic, or creative talent like the comedian. Being a hero simply requires good inner character, strong moral intelligence, and high personal awareness. Granted, most guys who are heroes come from a good home, with a good upbringing, and a fairly good childhood, at least from my experiences with guys, but even if you weren't blessed with that positive background, you still have a hero inside of you. You just have to join forces with him and work with that hero inside of you, not against him. Because everybody has a villain inside of them, too. And you want to rise high to the angel inside of you, not sink low to the devil inside of you. Good always beats bad in the end uh, anyway, because positive always overcomes negative eventually. Anyway, my point is, even if you suck at being romantic, and you suck at being funny... You just need to be intelligently aware, aggressively protective, impatiently enduring, and unbreakable with your girl. You need to show her you are her heroic king. You know, whether or not you manage to achieve level 1 of the romantic knight or level 2 of the comedian prince, just manage to achieve level 3 of the heroic king. The most important thing is that you are a strong, steady rock who comes to her rescue and doesn't flip out like a high-strung little be hotch over tiny trivial crap like a girl in other words the most important thing you must show her your dream girl is that you are and will always be a man a good man but a man because the hero is the man you know the comedian is the fun funny boy the romantic is the sexy charming guy but the hero is the sincere strong man you know 
She wants that fun, funny boy in you. She wants that sexy, charming guy in you. But most importantly, of no matter what, in the end, what she really, really, really wants most is that sincere, strong man in you. So if you suck at being the fun, funny boy of comical pleasure, or you suck at being the sexy, charming guy of romantic flattery, then just be the sincere, strong man of heroic protection. Because in the end, a good woman will always pick a good man over a charming guy or a funny boy. It just helps to get her to fall for you and stay happy with you if you're skilled enough to hit the overwhelming trifecta of all three of those awesome personality types. Now, of course, your double date with her will eventually turn into a single date, be it at that same night or over time. Or if your friends fall through, you just offer to take her on a, on a single date as your first date with her. Either way, you've already made it into her happy place. So you've got plenty of room to breathe now. Just make sure you take her on a double date or a single date by the end of the first week that you've introduced yourself to her. Because, you, you know, just don't let that window of her interest and trust close before you actually go on the date. But don't be impatient or rush her either. She'll see that as disrespectful and possibly cancel your date. And deservedly so. So if her schedule conflicts, let it. But find a day when she's free to hang with you and take her somewhere fun. I'll give you some tips for your first date in another video. For now, just get her to say yes and we'll talk later about the rest. I hope this advice uh, you know, has been helpful to you. I hope it helps you out. Come back and tell me how it went with your girl of interest and send me your video replies and comments about your experiences and stories in the dating world. I'd love to hear from you. And I hope it works out for you, you know, because nice guys deserve to finish first. Good luck and Godspeed. Love ya. Mm-hmm. <laughs>